Hi guys, spoilers, we're Trek Yards. Don't know if you knew that, but now you're spoiled, so there you go. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor spoiler. Cockings. That's not a spoiler, you, you know me. This is this is not a surprise to those that watch our show. But that being said, today's episode is gonna have spoilers from the last episode of Picard. So if you haven't seen it yet, and you're not don't want to be spoiled, don't watch. Spoilers now. Seven of nines at the end. That was rather quick if they wanted to just well, click out. It was a well, it was a rushed it was a rushed introduction. So it was just as you know, um, because last week kind of a padded episode. They made two episodes into three episodes, uh, which then meant that this episode I guess was maybe truncated a bit or whatever. And so they introduced it right at the end for one line in a very quick battle. Is that a, a, oh, uh, but credit as we said before to them. They now do it. Then do a holographic chateau, so they don't have to go back to Earth. So we are moving forward on that. Yeah, yeah, I was I was genuinely surprised to see her at the end of this. I expected it to be somebody else, um, because you know we got the introduction of she walks into the chateau and it's like, hey, trying to save the galaxy, Picard. Uh, so and she she had said that was the first time that they've met, which I don't know about that, but. He obviously knows who she is after she booms aboard, which is great. Seven of nine, and she's like, "You owe me a new ship, Picard." And <laughs> so, um, I, I still, I still hate that they said, and that might not be the case in the end that this is their first meeting, because she saw, he says seven of nine with more than just recognition, as if she'd met her before. Yeah, and it's yeah, absurd yeah. to think that ex Borg people wouldn't have met, that she wouldn't have wanted to meet him. You know, the ex Locutus, the ex Borg. You know, 20 years ago. That being said, with the way they've been starting these shows, they're all flashbacks. So the next one's going to start with a flashback of her, him first meeting her, and then it's going to jump to modern times. So there you go. That's the solution to the problem right there. Assuming that when they said this the first time they met, they, they're going to not do that. Because that, I mean, what, what a great sell, having both walking down a corridor of Starfleet Command, go back to the Botanical Garden, because it's classic. And then they're both wearing the in between uniform with a comm badge, and, she's, and that's when she leaves Starfleet. Or whatever, or or put them both in Nemesis, but they're not going to do that. Obviously, that's what we would do if we were fans. We'd cut back. Cause imagine seeing her in Nemesis uniform. Well, I guess she never wore if uniform. If we were fans, that's what we would do if we were fans. And, and in charge of the show, I mean. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, she's she's back. Um, I I knew it was going to be her instantly because a she's promoted quite heavily, and you it's weird to introduce some, someone that late. She needs to have a presence, and in in the dialogue sequence leading up to it, they keep saying. His, his, his signals come in. He's hailing. His ship's dying. He wants to beam over. You don't use that many pronouns in normal conversation to see their ship, that ship. It was incredibly yeah, usually forced. It's, you, yeah, exactly. Usually it's their hailing. They're doing this. Um, so it was heavy-handed a bit. I didn't notice it the first time, though, so i got to say it worked. Yeah. Um, whereas I, I noticed it as a, as a trick, because if they're, they're reiterating it's a he, so then surprise it's not a he, that's the payoff. Whereas normally, if you didn't have done, if you hadn't done that, you wouldn't assume it's her either. So it would be fine as a payoff without that. They just, it's it just a bit weird. But she appears. She has, she has one line more than Luke in, in Force Awakens, but a very similar sort of uh, vibe. Passes out. Great. Next episode will be focused on Seven of Nine. Perf. Well, it won't be because it's their weird. And she had a ship as well. She comes in. I mean, t- tell me what you think. I mean, now, now you know it was her. What do you think of the entire sequence and her her ness? I love the uh, love the introduction of her saving the day essentially. Although she didn't have much of a plan, I mean, I, she had the only ship she had, I guess. Uh, but it was going to get destroyed very likely against this big Romulan bird of prey, and she's just lucky that they transported her aboard. Now, did she know this was Picard? Uh, was she given a heads up that he was there? Um, we need to find out that context. Is she looking to? join them to go to the board does she know about he's looking for soji does she know that she's there there's a lot of questions um as far as that goes or it could just be like coincidence oh you're going to the, going to look for maddox okay oh look we're going to a board cube wow we got seven and nine along that's great on the one side note uh you mentioned each episode we had we've had a legacy character return it's data in episode one and two one being his actual appearance two being his face Three, it's it's Hugh, four, seven. But hopefully now we're going to get Hugh and seven as regulars because they add so much to the story. These new people are fine, but they add more to the old people. That's why they're legacy. Um, in terms of coincidence, so the way I took the scene as the... So Picard beams down, and also he asked beam down, so therefore they know he's going. Uh, and someone tips off the Warlord guy who's sort of in control of the planet, sort of not. I'm sure he's doing like, we'll give you resources, you protect us as well. 
and then that signal goes out. Picard's only there for a day, so the Warlord ship is close enough, but I don't think they care about distances. I think everywhere is as close as a day. I don't think they care that it can take like a week to get to Roman space, and I don't think they care at this point. Whatever. That being said, I mean, Ag- Agnes did say that space was boring. She went over all the Cybertronic journals, so she they were traveling for a while. I took that as like three days. It's still a passage of time, right? And I, I'm glad they threw that in because it's not like, oh, we're here in two hours. <laughs> You know, so the ship then the warlord is obviously close. He walks in to attack Picard and disable him, taking him prisoner. Hazar. But when that signal goes out, I'm sure Seven, who's part of this Ranger group that helped protect Romulan space. I'm not sure how th- we don't that get an doesn't seem for the right. Rangers. Why is everyone focused on Romulans? There's a big, you know, Seven. Come on, you have this, you have a bigger job than the Romulans. I mean, and, and all, all of the, I mean. You're not going to be able to warp between Roman space and Klingon space to help protect both people. I hope there's a really thought out explanation because currently these pieces do not connect, as in logically, which is a problem. But anyway, so she's close enough. She gets she gets told she's having the closest agent in range. So she warps in with whatever ship she's piloting, a fighter without the offensive ability to really be effective. Now, yes, it's effective enough to, to rip through the ship. But also get completely destroyed. So therefore, she's you know, this scene definitely I think lowers to lowers Seven's abilities in my mindset. That in in Voyager she was always an excellent officer, like the top basically the top science officer on the entire crew. The fact that she goes in this battle, knowing that she cannot be effective enough, she's lost her edge severely over the last few years. I know it's rushed, but even if she just hails them, says Picard, follow me. We'll leave together, like. You could have played it so much clever or used the defense grid to attack the ship. That would have been the smart way around. She, like, because especially since she knows the planet, she could have communicated with them saying, hey, it's seven, one of your rangers. Could you please target the big ship? Pew, it's gone. You know, they could have smarted their way out so they just went pew, pew, and then she gets almost killed. So it's played like she's very, very dumb, which is a shame. Uh, I thought the vibe was good. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Rios is going to be, like, all over her. Um, he seems like kind of a swab, debonair kind of. And she's know, pretty famous. Gonna, yeah, I think he's going to make a few passes at her. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see the dynamic with all the other characters that we have here. Well, her and uh, the XO. I mean, Seven's a powerful personality, and this other nude character's trying to be powerful, but she has nothing on Seven. So, <laughs> see that power dynamic. But obviously they can't let the legacy characters really outshine the new ones, so I'm sure she'll be weaker than she ever was in Voyager. That's just kind of how they're going to play. Because you make a, a, normal, a convention in modern cinema, especially Star Wars, is you make the new characters seem strong by making the old characters seem weaker. You don't build up the new characters and have the old characters be strong. You do this shift. So I'm sure we're going to make Seven weaker to make the new ones seem better. It's just a trope they use. It's called less good writing. Um, it happens so many things right now. Uh, now, just to, you know, obviously she's not acting as seven but I, I never liked people's argument that Wow, she's in first seven of nine. It's been twenty years, and she's she's now interacted with more than one hundred and thirty people. Are you kidding? Of course, she's gonna have a radically different personality and view. You know, you know she, that was her seven years in Voyager was her childhood, where she got to grow up to be one person. Then she had teen years, and then she evolved after that. So no, she's gonna be a completely different personality, except with that base science and knowledge. And strength, but she'll yeah she'll talk like human. She said in interviews that she had to learn to be more human to blend in because she was always going to be as prejudiced against her as being ex Borg. But if she acted more human, she thought that would help. Um, yeah, I'm happy she's on board, and hopefully she's part of the crew and not just a you know a couple episodes kind of thing. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. So I mean, she's the strongest character that they've got. They've now weakened the Picard character so much. He's not, you know, that Seven is now the strongest character theoretically in the entire show. Like, by quite a lot. But Picard's, or Picard's like the strongest speech maker. Yeah. Still got Just it. Saying. Yeah. Guys, let us know down in the comments what you guys think about Seven returning in this fa- in this manner. Uh, did you expect it? Was it a, sh- a surprise? Let us know all that kind of stuff. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification icon, and also click the join button so you can join us in our ranks, the Trekyard's ranks of Captain, Commander, and Admiral. Yes, um, but there are other ways to help us as well. Yes, Patreon, as you guys know, is a is a sort of YouTuber favored way. Uh, you put money every single month. You know how many videos we make a month? A lot. And and for five dollars, you won't even notice. If hundred, you give five bucks, 
and we know 100 people watch trust at least, that can go a massive, massive way to making sure that we know we can be confident, not just make the baseline content, but more content we want to do. Because we want to do, always do better and more. But if we don't have the funding, we have to get other jobs, other jobs means less time, and it's, it's a thing. You know, we think we've deserved the, the, the support so far, and more support equals more things. So please do go enjoy it and support if you can. If you can't, uh, that way do a one-time donation at trekyards at, at hotmail.com is the PayPal, or go to our website, trekyards.com, and donate there. Or just join the lives, as you said, that is a great, great way. Or just, just subscribing, liking, commenting. Those things help the analytics and help more people find us who might be able to support us financially. So, all the great ways. That's right. So, until then, until next time, go check out the things down below. Help us out. And I'll see you next time. I'm Captain Fold. No, I'm Connor. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.